which you guys today would take a look at the truth about Windows System Restore and whether you should leave System Restore on or off. Now, generally, System Restore should be left on to allow your PC to automatically revert to a previous state if a problem occurs with your PC, like a bad update or software installation. Now, by default in Windows 11, System Restore has been disabled, and I think Microsoft are trying to move away from System Restore. So should you enable System Restore or should you leave it disabled? I personally think you should enable it again because it acts like a safety net. It's a built-in recovery which allows you to revert back to a previous state that was working properly before maybe you installed a driver and something went wrong. You can roll back to a working state. Now, I do believe that some people don't understand what System Restore is and what it can do and what it can't do. And some people rely on it far too much for the wrong reasons. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. So first off, if you're going to install a driver, now is the time to create a System Restore point because you can revert back if that driver got corrupted in some way, shape or form during the installation process. So before you install any driver or software, you should create a system restore point. That way you can roll back without losing any personal information. Also, it means that it's faster than reinstalled in Windows. Now, if you love tweaking the registry, I would always advise you to take a system restore point before you make any sort of registry changes. This can protect you from registry or system corruption and restores keys and Windows system files and registry settings to a working state. After you've made registry tweaks or changes to the system, a lot of people love going into the registry, but again, it's high risk because if you make changes using a program that is making lots of changes in the registry, at least having a, a system restore point allows you to roll back using the system restore uh, feature which will help recover the system to a working state before you make those changes. System Restore reverts your PC to a previous state using System Restore points, undoing changes without affecting personal files and reverting system files and settings back to a working state before you made those changes. So this is where System Restore point comes in. I would use the System Restore point uh, before you installed any applications. But the thing you need to understand is if you uninstall an application, the system restore point may bring it back only if the system restore point includes system changes. However, it will not restore any personal app data like save settings, emails in Outlook or any sort of browser bookmarks or any sort of things like that. Now, system restore point is not a backup. It doesn't back up your files. So it does not restore or delete any personal files like documents, photos, videos, or emails. So if you deleted or changed personal files, System Restore will not bring those files back during the System Restore process. Also, malware. This is a big one. System Restore might remove some malware if it was installed recently, but most modern malware hides and can reappear after a System Restore. Always use an antivirus or malware removal tools for that. It's important that when you remove malware from the computer, that you remove any old system restore points and then create a new system restore point. This will remove any malware that might be hiding in some restore points. System restore point can't fix any sort of serious system corruption or hardware failure. If Windows is severely damaged, example, missing critical files, or it won't boot at all, system restore points will not restore your PC and it will fail. It can't repair issues like blue screen of death or bad hard drives or failing RAM or any sort of overheating issues. So take that into account. Even blue screen of death, if you've got major issues like this, system restore point just might not restore the system back to a working state. It can't restore any files outside the monitored drives that you've got system restore points on. So you have to add in other drives and partitions to the system restore uh, recovery software. Also, any Windows updates or drivers installed after a restore point, any updates like this will not be restored. 
these will be removed. However, it won't fix problems caused by driver corruption outside the system restore points scope. So basically, anything that's happening after you've done a system restore point, it's not going to work. And you may see errors like this popping up on the screen when you're trying to recover uh, the actual system. Now, system restore points do take up a lot of space on your drive if you've got it set too high. Also, people don't remove any old system restore points and they can go back years and they try to roll back to that point in time and they will lose quite a lot of data. They can uh, cause major problems with a system where they'll lose applications and also it will not go back perfectly and you can end up with an error code like this. And this is very common. This is why it's important to keep system restore points cleaned out and deleted and keep fresh ones updated so you can always use it as a rollback rather than leaving really old system restore points and try to roll back to those at a later date because you'll end up with an error code like that. Now, if you want to enable system restore, it's very simple. All you need to do here is basically go to the search box here and type system restore or restore or something like that. And you will see the system properties window coming up and inside here, protected settings, hit the configure button and you can see mine is turned on. And I normally uh, will turn this on and I will give the maximum usage probably around about 3% because I only keep a certain amount of restore points inside here. And these are when I'm doing a simple task on the PC. Like if I'm just before I'm going to install a graphics driver, I would then create a restore point before I installed that graphics driver, just in case something went wrong. You can delete all of the old system restore points by hitting the delete button. This is important if you have really old system restore points on your system. You can clean a lot of these out. Once you've got a good clean working system, you can put working or clean state, whatever you want to do, call it whatever you like, name it and create a system restore point on your system. That's now done. It's important you monitor this on a regular basis. You can click on the system restore button and it will say recommended restore. It will find the latest uh, restore point that you created if you have some sort of corruption with a program or driver that you've installed. You can choose a different restore point here. You can see some of them are manual and some of them are automatic after Windows updates. Now, like I said before, if you don't clean these out, you will end up with a massive amount of system restore points and this can cause problems if you go back too far. So I like to keep these monitored and updated and remove any sort of old ones from the system and clean them out and create new ones. That way, I will know I'll always have a safety net to roll back to if something goes wrong with the system. So to summarize, System Restore is good for undoing recent system level changes like bad drivers or updates. It's not so good for personal files, malware or physical hardware issues. Just take that into account. Password resets or account recovery, it won't reset passwords or restore deleted user accounts or anything like that. It's got its limitations. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below on what you use. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Big shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.